Hey, what's up? Welcome to this week's episode of Merrick's Garage. I'm going to give you guys today a little tutorial on how I use this multimeter. Multimeters are often bandied about as an absolute must for any toolbox, and I agree with that sentiment. But I think a lot of people don't actually know how to use it. I am no exception. I only have a small grasp of how this thing works but it is an indispensable tool for anything electrical. And today I've got to figure out why my locker, my e-locker is not working. There's a couple of ways to do this. I could tear everything down or replace it all, or I could troubleshoot with this guy, identify what the potential problems could be, and then knock them out one by one. So that's what we're gonna to do today. I'll show you guys my tips and tricks for this, and hopefully we'll fix my locker. Before we get into the meat of this video, I did want to take this opportunity to throw a plug in for some of the merchandise I have and my Amazon store. A lot of you guys are hitting up the Amazon store and I totally appreciate it. Uh, I get a little kickback from stuff that gets purchased on there and it all just goes back into the channel. Basically any product that I use or tool that I find or something that I think is cool, I put over in the Amazon store and I've broken everything down basically on videos. So there's square body parts, a square body lighting, there's welding stuff, there's uh, audio stuff. I got tons of stuff over there. And if you're ever in need of a part that you saw on this channel, most likely it's going to be over on that channel, on that store. So I'm going to put that link down below. All the electronic stuff like the multimeter will be on the store today and I'll have a link for that. Also. I've got some pretty sweet swag. Shirts, hats, stickers. Look at this stuff. Yeah. Show your support from Merrick's Garage. Go over to my website, merricksgarage.com. You will find this stuff up in the store. And merricksgarage.com has uh, more behind the scenes details in some of the videos. So uh, just a plug for that. This stuff uh, helps me continue to bring the content to you every week and helps justify to my wife why I continue to spend money on my truck. So it would be a huge solid if you guys would uh, check it out and give me a like, give me a subscribe, maybe buy a sticker. Anyway, let's go see the rest of the video and we'll teach you guys how to use a multimeter. This right here is my multimeter. This guy has seen a lot of work on this truck and is an indispensable tool for me when I'm doing any sort of wiring. Before we get too carried away, I'm just gonna run through the basic functions of this guy and what I use it for, and then we'll get a little bit more into detail as to what else it can do. First and foremost, you've gotta make sure that you are set up correctly. The black is your common. It's always gonna be your common. That is your ground. And then you're gonna have your power side. And if you look on here, if I'm doing a an amp test and I need to go above 10 amps, see, DC 10A, that's what I'm gonna be using right there. Everything else, voltage, ohms, resistance, continuity, battery, milliamps is all done with this guy right here. Now your uh, multimeter may vary, but those are the basic standard ones. Here I have my voltage tester. If I know what kind of battery I'm testing, I can put it on here, test the positive and the negative and get a readout as to what it's doing. I can check my milliamperage. I can check how much is being traveled through that circuit. I can check my ohms. I don't really know how to do that. I don't use that one. But I do use this guy a ton. This is my continuity. This is going to test when both probes come in contact, it gives me a tone. So what this guy is incredibly useful for is testing if I have a complete circuit. So there's a couple other ones we're gonna get into here in a little bit, but let's jump in with these guys and we'll start troubleshooting up on my battery. This is my secondary battery in my system, but I wanna use it for illustrative purposes here to show you how I can test my voltage. I'm gonna put this guy down into 12 volts, apply the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive, and this battery is fully charged. That's really, really cool. Why I want to know this, why I wanna know my battery's voltage before I begin anything, and I'm gonna do this over on my, my main battery too, 
is it shows me that this is what the battery is capable of pushing out. It's capable of pushing 13 volts or 12.5 volts or whatever. So if I see anything less than that down at the point where I'm testing, it's an area to start addressing because I've got a voltage drop. Now that can be caused by a bunch of things, you know, the length of the wire run and resistors and impedance devices and things like that. But it's a, just a good idea for me to go, okay, I'm not getting enough voltage down here. Why not? Or more than likely, I'm not getting voltage here at all. Why not? Generally, that's going to be your first indication that you've got a bad ground somewhere. And so you start probing around. Can you get voltage if you change up where the ground is on the piece of equipment you're testing? Figuring out if you've got a good ground on the part that you're trying to work on is usually the first step. An electrical circuit is a very, very simple thing. It's a point A to point B with some stuff in the middle. That stuff in the middle being the part that you want to deliver electricity to, to do the work that you're getting, needing to get done. If there's any break in that circuit, that piece isn't going to work. With the multimeter, you can find if the voltage is correct, if the current is correct, if the circuit is clean, if the ground is good. You can do all that stuff with it. Armed with the tool and the knowledge of how to use it, the best way to go about figuring out any electrical problems is to start at your battery. Do you have good voltage? If you've got good voltage on your battery, you know you should be able to deliver it to the appliance that you want to um, energize. And then you just need to trace down and see if there's a problem anywhere between the battery and that device. And this right here is why it's a good idea to always just start checking stuff out at the source. Look. This movement that I'm seeing in my ground is not good. That means that I am not having a solid ground. My power side is good, but let's get this tightened up right now. A safety pin, just like this, just a regular, regular safety pin is necessary to troubleshoot unless you want to strip every wire down. What this allows you to do is poke through the insulating and get down to the wire strands so that you can test a circuit without having to strip the wire down to bare. Really quick, really easy, really critical. Grab one of these, throw it in your toolbox. Anything sharp that can get into that wire, uh, but the smaller the better because you don't want to disturb that insulation any more than you need to. So let me show you what I'm gonna try and do right now. I'm gonna test continuity between the socket and the wire because I'm not sure if I'm getting continuity all the way through from the socket down to the locker. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Testing for continuity with the multimeter is the best way to determine if you've got a short in your system. What this is going to do is basically when these guys create a circuit, they will make a tone. So pretend this uh, flux right here is a wire. As I touch it, I get a tone knowing that I have continuity from point A to point B. If I do not get a tone, then I know I have a break somewhere in that system. Here's the e-locker. This should be able to energize and lock it, but right now it's not. So I'm gonna do some continuity testing. I put in this little, uh, little spade so I have something to go off of, and I'm gonna continuity test down here in the wiring complex. I was able to test these two pins and no matter what, I wasn't getting current conducting through and therefore the locker was not engaging. So my next step was to get the wires uh, available so I could continuity test and see if that was the issue. As I started to disassemble this plug, because it was kind of loose and something wasn't quite looking right, I noticed that nothing was uh, connected to the terminals, meaning that the spades that come through the male parts were recessed into the plug, this guy right here, and they weren't making contact with anything. I built this uh, little power supply testing unit when I did my electrolysis tank. It is, all it is, it's a computer power supply that I got from an old dead computer my buddy had. And this is a circuit board I bought off Amazon for like 10 bucks. You plug it into the circuit board and now you've got 12 volts, you've got 6 volts, you've got 3.3 .3 volts. 
it's a great tool for me to use in the fact that I don't have to rely on the vehicle's electricity system. If I have any concerns that I've got issue with my battery delivering current, I can deliver current with this guy knowing that I've isolated the problem away from the battery. If it works with this, but it doesn't work with the battery, that's another piece in the puzzle as I'm tearing things apart and figuring out what's going on with it. So I don't need to wire up to my battery. I can isolate that out of the system by getting a separate 12 volt source. So I connected my ground right here. You see my ground wire is connected up to one of the terminals right there. Now I'm just gonna try and energize this one. Okay, you hear that click? That's the locker engaging. So what that tells me is it's working, it's just not getting continuity. So I'm gonna flip the switch, see if we have 12 volts coming to right here. If we do, I'm just gonna need to fix this harness and we'll be back in business. So the switch has been turned on underneath. So this should have 12 volts coming to it. I can't get into these pins. I don't have anything small enough. So I've done my safety pin trick. That's my hot side. So if I connect that to a ground, which is gonna be anything like this, I should be able to see that I've got 12 volts coming through this hot side, which would tell me that my problem was right here. You see that this is connected up and I'm getting 12.26 volts. And I have the positive coming to the hot side of the plug. And then the negative is grounded right here, straight to this guy. You see that? So there's my ground. I know this looks kind of confusing, but uh, I had to do it this way so you guys could see what I did. But that tells me that this is all working. So my problem is in these plugs. I'm just going to cut this and wire them together. If I need to remove it later, I'll just cut it again. So I have really taken a liking to these guys and let me show you why. It's butt connected with solder and insulation. So as I melt this, it's going to seal the joint. And the other thing that's cool is it isolates it too. Now the trick I found is to use a heat gun. If you don't use a heat gun, you often end up with an inefficient joint. So let's uh, smelt this guy. One other feature that I like to use uh, when I'm trying to figure out what size amp to use is going to be the DC amperage meter. With this, I'm able to measure how much current is passing through the circuit to energize the device. So you can see I have moved my um, non-common, I don't know what it's called, my red one, over to the DC 10 amps. And there's my DC 10 amp meter reading. All I do with this, I've already hooked up this light, so it's got a positive and a negative. I'm going to put one of the connectors through the positive, and then I'm going to innervate it by taking this guy and connecting it to a 12 volt source. See the light come on? And you can see it's drawing less than an amp. What that allows me to do is to know what charge is going through the cabling, know how long my run can be, and if I really want to get knees deep, gauge of wire and things like that. Armed with the ability to read voltages, like so, I now also have the ability to check grounds. So I know this ground is good. I know this is hot. I know that this, should I provide a good ground to it, is gonna give me 12 volts. Glass should not do it. Rubber should not do it. Painted surfaces, not really. This painted surface, eh, nope. This is gonna allow you to probe and 
and test grounds and things like that. That is gonna be the problem most of the time. You're gonna have a bad ground. Like I just had with this uh, locker circuit, it was just the connection down at the locker had come undone. Therefore, I wasn't able to complete a circuit. Therefore, no energy was able to do work. Therefore, the appliance at the end of the electrical circuit didn't do anything. Well, I hope you found this video instructional and helpful. Kind of a departure from what I normally do, but I thought it might be helpful to some of you guys out there. If you didn't like it, well, give me a thumbs down. If you did like it, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and we'll back at you next week. Merrick's Garage, out.